stress isn't good for us, but for the first time, research has suggested that reducing it benefits both our physical and mental health. A study published in The Lancet has looked at the function of an area of the brain called the amygdala. It's responsible for emotions, survival instincts and memory. And it's more active when we're stressed. Now, authors believe the response it produces could also cause heart attack and stroke. Join us now for our London newsroom, Dr Mike Napton, who's medical director of the British Heart Foundation, Neil Shah, founder of the Stress Management Society here in the studio. Very good morning to you. Welcome. Good morning. Um, uh, doctor, if I could first ask you, just tell us a little bit more about the amygdala. It's a new word on me, and this research is... Uh, have I said that correctly? I suspect you're going to correct me on the pronunciation. <laughs> tell me a little bit about it. Well, I call it the amygdala, and it's a small area of the brain, quite deep in the brain, and, as you say, it's... Uh, the part of the brain that's responsible for stress, emotion, memory, those deeper, less conscious functions that the brain is responsible for. And what this study has shown that um, it's a novel mechanism linking our emotional lives with very physical manifestations of that, such as heart attack and stroke. And whilst it was a small study, it does uh, provide us with a, another mechanism to study within the research laboratory which might in time have implications for patients that I would see as a GP in terms of managing their cardiovascular risk. It's not a shock though is it um, Dr Mike because we know don't we that stress causes physical manifestations don't we? Uh, we certainly do so um, the common ones would be um, a racing heart, perhaps sweating a little bit, obviously the emotional sides of it, feeling anxious or perhaps uh, depressed. The important thing about this research is trying to understand how those emotional uh, effects, which are often caused by external life events, stressful uh, work environments, marital problems, money problems, how that sort of stuff then leads to very physical manifestations of the body such as heart attack and stroke because if we can understand those mechanisms we might be able to intervene to uh, improve people's outcomes. Mm. So Neil, uh, Neil Shah is the director of the Stress Management Society listening to that so the, the, that's the medical evidence uh, produced in The Lancet today I suppose a lot of this is about how, how do you try and help yourself because stress is a part is something that people have to deal with one way or another. Absolutely. We can't avoid stress and we shouldn't be aiming to avoid stress. It's being able to firstly recognize it and understand what steps we can take to do something about it. Now, the first step is most people don't understand what stress is. Most people mistakenly believe stress is an emotion. It's actually a physical response given to us by nature as a survival mechanism. If you're being attacked by a saber-toothed tiger, your body has an inbuilt mechanism to put you into what's known as a fight or flight state, which will instigate a number of changes triggered by releases of, of, of hormones such as adrenaline and cortisol, which basically better equip you to fight hard or run fast perfectly appropriate response as a short-term intervention but we weren't designed to live in stress most people in modern society are living in a state which was designed to be to, 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 to put you into a state just long enough to escape from that saber tooth it tiger. sounds a bit like you're saying there's good stress and bad stress yeah well kind of I wouldn't say good stress and bad stress which suggests there's different types of stress there's only one stress response I would more promote it as stress used appropriately as stress used inappropriately if you're being attacked by a saber-toothed tiger you're in a car crash there's an emergency stress is good if you're sat at your desk overwhelmed by deadlines you're sat on the couch of BBC breakfast and getting really stressed and nervous that might be counterproductive for the activity you're engaged in so I'm going to ask people to consider it as stress used appropriately or stress used inappropriately and staying in a state of stress for extended periods of time will have a damaging effect to your physiology. Dr Mike Napton let me also ask, also ask you a question on this what can you do about it then you know what do you advise patients when they are stressed? Yeah so as uh, we've just heard the first thing is to recognize that uh, there are uh, there is stress uh, happening I would say as a GP that all my patients will have psychological and physical uh, issues and the important thing is to recognize that that's happening uh, in terms of managing it there are a number of interventions um, quite a lot of them uh, people can manage it themselves if they understand what's uh, happening and th that understanding in itself is quite therapeutic but uh, for other people who are affected by more severe levels of stress which is affecting their physiology but also their um, life it's a, preventing them perhaps from living a full and productive life 
Um, there are more um, interventions such as psychological therapy, as CBT, that's cognitive behavioural therapy, and the like. So there's a range of interventions that we've got to choose from. Um, but the main thing is to recognise it in the first place. If you don't do that, you're not going to be able to address it effectively. Mm. Okay. Uh, th thank you, Doctor. And Neil, can I just ask, I, I'm, my attention is drawn to your lively shirt, and I, people maybe have seen already your shoes. <laughs> is, is this, I mean, I'm not trying to be flippant, but is that part of dealing with stress? Is it, you know, is it, can things you do, uh, the things you wear, have a bearing on how you feel? Absolutely. And as I said, like being able to express yourself. And I think expression is actually something that's really important. Now, one of the things that you know, I'd like to really highlight is that mental health issues are epidemic proportions. The number one reason for death in a man under the age of 45 in Britain today is suicide, sadly. And that's because a lot of men don't find it comfortable expressing themselves, either physically, mentally, or emotionally. And I think expression is such an important part of it. What you've got to bear in mind, the quickest way to change your psychology is to change your physiology. And th the best way to do that is to move, to be active. Laughing changes your physiology. You know, just even, even us sitting here having a laugh about my shoes, that's going to actually change the way that your body's functioning. So, you know, expression, uh, physical activity, laughter, enjoyment, actually will have an impact on your stress. Mm -hmm. wasn't laughing at the <laughs> shoes, by the way, just, just, just an observation. Uh, Neil, Fantastic. lovely to see you here this yeah. morning. Do uh, Dr. Right. Mike Napton, thank you for your time this morning as well. Thank yeah, you very thank much. thank you very much. I'm going to see you tomorrow, aren't I, in some flamboyant <laughs> outfit, just laughing loads. Just for the hell of it. Yeah, there we go. Uh, time to find out what's happening with the weather now. Morning, Carol, how's it looking?